Today I'm going to talk about narcissism. So many of the things that I see online about narcissism are calling out narcissism, like saying that these things are narcissistic, these people are narcissistic, calling out narcissists, how to avoid a narcissist, how to spot a narcissist. Um, there's a much fewer quality kind of reflections, I feel, on narcissistic traits and how many of us have them and how it's not like full-blown narcissistic abuse, whatever, but we still have narcissistic traits. Um, most of us that probably deserve some reflection and often like our encounters with narcissists can actually uh, well, the people who we judge as narcissists um, Might be kind of reflections of some of our own narcissistic traits as well um, I know it's not that simple and there are cases of like flat-out narcissistic Abuse and people with narcissistic personality disorder and, and all of that but I think it's helpful for all of us to consider uh, our own, the potential for narcissistic traits in our own lives, in our own work, in our own interactions with people. And I'm just going to talk a little bit about how different types of narcissism for me uh, manifest in my creativity and um, my kind of, yeah, just like interaction with others and my work in the world essentially. Um, so the obvious one is in relation to creativity is like typical grandiose narcissism so that's the kind of idea that like I'm the center of attention like I'm the performer I'm the whatever like everything's about me I've got a song to share with you all everyone look at me needing to be the center of attention or whatever um, and I feel like definitely there's there's some of this that I, that I see in my character um, I see actually probably more covert narcissistic traits so it's like a feeling rather of um rather than like actually being in the middle demanding attention and being contemptuous and resentful that you, i haven't got it and, and making a fuss about that or being entitled to attention i would tend to be more sort of like inwardly like vi self victimizing about the fact that um i ha i want to be seen and i want to share and i want to be, be validated um, like some of the people around me or like some of the people with sharp elbows or bigger personalities um, The extent of like grandiose narcissism and like sharp elbowed performative kind of like driven entitled people in show business in Basically like the higher tiers of anything I think is extremely high I think to be in order to you know, get places in like the creative industries in order to, um, you know, be that entitled to attention of others and success and to be a go-getter and be singularly focused. I think like a lot of those people will need to have like quite high rate, like quite high in narcissistic traits because otherwise like if you have like a normal level of, okay, like it's not my time to talk anymore. Um, and I certainly have interacted with a lot of people who, you know, they just, they're, they're only there to, they're there to talk about their work, their ideas. Everyone they, they see is a kind of opportunity for, okay, this person can like give me attention and listen to my, uh, my, my pitch. This person is somebody that I can like practice on to try and like sell them my work or something. This person is a potential fan, buyer, follower, whatever. And there's this kind of um, term that I've found really helpful, uh, which is the idea of narcissistic supply and how uh, narcissism will, and th again, this is what kind of like the digital culture of today, the individualism of today promotes this. Um, so it wants us all to have narcissistic traits and to be narcissistic in the way that we um, obtain like you know, followers or engagement, essentially. Um, obviously, social media and things will say it's about connection, um, but I think, like, definitely, I find social media really hard. Um, I, I find a lot of... The, the work of negotiating and maintaining real relationships quite hard um, because it's a constant, yeah, a kind, a kind of a constant confusion around, like, uh, reciprocation and 
feeling like um, I've not been clear or not communicated myself clearly. That's a kind of different topic that's probably relating to like, you know, other non-normative things. But in terms of narcissism, um, this idea of people who have like, like uh, people or a trait where one has like a sort of hollow core, um, contempt for genuine connection, which is the genuine connection of being vulnerable, being on the same level as other people, um, being one, you know, being part of the, the great tapestry that is humans, being one of the gang, being in the family, being in the circle, at the same level as everyone else. Um, and what, like, a narcissistic trait would be to um, have contempt for that kind of thing and feel like I'm always different, even if it's different in a bad way, like, feeling like I'm different, like, I'm better. But grandiose narcissism would be like, I'm better, I'm too good for this, like, these people don't understand me, they don't have a, you know, they don't get me or whatever. And um, covert narcissism might be like, uh, uh these people... Uh, leaving me out, these people think I'm think I'm a worm or whatever, and I kind of have both of these things, and I can definitely also relate to like the hollow core feeling of that, like I do not exist, I do not have inherent worth or worthiness as a human being, I need to be uh, producing, creative, praised, validated, and acknowledged in order to be. Um, worthy or like to, in order to exist to what in order to feel alive and I thrive on that stuff and it's kind of horrible and painful because ultimately like it's an empty it's a it's a leaky jar it's a cup that can never be filled you can never get enough validation affirmation adulation accolade whatever if you are operating from a feeling of like hollow core of like, you know, I am I am what I do rather than I am just a person like everyone else. I invest and make time for and nurture real life connections. I don't have contempt for, for genuine connections or think that I'm somehow above them and like I should just have like fans or followers or whatever. Um, this is something that you know, when it comes to narcissism is, is hard to understand or navigate. Um, I do a lot of reflection on the origins of some of those narcissistic traits in my own, uh, I guess, creativity or in my own being. And I think a lot of it is, and this is not to blame the culture or parenting or anything, but just to label the fact that we do have a tendency to uh, raise children in a way where we put them on pedestals, we praise them, we say, you are so clever, you are so wonderful, wow, and then you kind of like grow up feeling like you only exist, um, you only matter when you are being praised or validated or affirmed. And this can kind of feed that sort of like narcissistic cycle of like, oh, like I am only, like I need to be validated, praised, elevated in order to feel anything um, and in, even when I feel that uh, and people do praise me I just feel this kind of like weirdness or ick of like why are you uh, praising me so I'm, I'm kind of uh, I am art in, uh, uh, outing, outing myself and my narcissism right now um, but I feel like it's a typical thing that they say like oh yeah narcissists will adopt the um, lingo and they'll like show you that they are you know self-reflective in order to pretend you, to you that they're not narcissists and they're, they're aware and they do the work or whatever and I think that about myself a lot as well because I'm like is it just um is this just self-reflection just a strategy and do I actually have this like really super hollow core and lack of empathy where my talking about narcissism on a YouTube video is actually just like a get out clause of like oh yeah look I'm not narcissistic because I am reflective and um, if you can self reflect then you're not a narcissist but again like we're seeing a distinction here between like narcissistic personality disorder like through and through bona fide narcissists who are just like you know everyone knows what those kinds of people are like I know that I'm not one of them 
I know that I'm not that entitled. I know that probably I have overall more, nas uh, more covert narcissistic traits. So I was just going to talk a little bit more about those before ending. Um, the covert traits might be not what you think. So grandiose is often what people think about when they think about like a typical narcissist. But covert narcissism often manifests in ways that are a bit more subtle and hidden. So that's um, the person who's like, you know, sort of victimised and like self self victimising around the fact that like, oh, nobody like nobody listens to my work or like nobody's interacting with my posts or like nobody kind of, you know, it's like poor little me. Um, I'm gonna like use my tears or. Um, my weaponize my sort of wounds essentially and the fact that I need validation and I ache for connection but I'm, I don't want to actually like connect with people because you um, and I don't want all the shit that comes with that um, yet yeah, feeling that ache and that need for affirmation and validation um, but kind of like trying to hide it by by being like sad and, and, and being victimized um, there's also an emotional manipulation there where people can um yeah i guess like act like um you know if you do do this for me um you know share my thing or like you know help me because uh, rather than it being like i'm amazing i'm like braggadocio love that word um arrogant the typical kind of presentation that you'd expect people might um, use the fact that they are they're really struggling or they're like whatever to try and coerce you or emotionally manipulate you into doing something that you don't want to do um, so for me I think that I've definitely used this and I've like weaponized my wounds in the past to probably yeah like to like get some kind of validation um, so it's this thing of uh, I don't feel okay, um, I don't feel enough, I don't feel like a person, but I also don't have the skills to communicate or connect or be vulnerable or like acknowledge that like I'm not okay, so I'm gonna like try and coerce people into doing the thing that I think will make me feel okay, which is like sharing uh, my music that I've worked really hard on or like sharing my um, uh, whatever like heart school video because I've invested all this time and like nobody's paying attention to me and and poor me and, and I think it'll really help people and sh you know it, it's probably help if if whatever so anyway that's just a kind of like performance of some of those aspects um th I think it's a super interesting conversation and I, I'm really grateful to a certain friend who has yeah I talk a lot with about narcissistic traits and we our relationship is basically like us often like calling out like oh I think that was a bit narcissistic or like you know we'll both sort of reflect on that and uh, analyze like oh no no that's just normal um, and Dr. Romani uh, on on YouTube is a great resource because she's good at saying like okay yeah you, you probably have some narcissistic traits because everyone does you're probably not a full-blown narcissist and again this tendency we have to sort of just like deem point fingers at people as being like narcissistic and then like shut the door and not do any of our own self-reflection on the fact that we all have narcissistic traits and the narcissists the real like dangerous narcissists that we encounter are like warning signs and sort of invitations to like examine our own narcissistic traits and capacities as well and also that just recognizing that probably um, a lot of the world and a lot of the successful people that we might see and look up to are like very much likely to be narcissists and that's why they kind of like never stop and they want to get to the top and they want to be in the limelight sharp elbows I you know look at me I'm need, above everyone I need to be validated and seen and I have this other thing and you'll find them just like whether it's in a kind of um, traditional like creative expression it might be the sort of um, cause ethical narcissism of like the sort of the person who is uh, the martyr who is a sort of 
dying or fighting for a cause and you know there's a form of narcissism and coercion and emotional manipulation there as well and you know probably obviously there's a, a nice line between like direct action and activism and then there's certain people who are like just performing stuff online um, and wanting to have an almost like self-righteous like I'm better than you this cause is better like this co this cause is important and uh, anyway I think probably some people will know what I mean some people won't know what I mean at all and if you don't know what I mean um, maybe watching some of those videos about narcissistic traits might be helpful but the most useful thing is actually just asking the question of like oh do like rather than being like I'm not I'm definitely not like that like what's she talking about being like do I have that tendency has there been a time when I have uh weaponized my vulnerability or weakness to try and get someone to do something have I ever manipulated anyone have I ever considered other people as like a means to an end um, and what are my feelings about connection and genuine connection? Do I feel I have a hollow core? Um, why do I do what I do? What is the end game? And yeah, I think it's just useful to reflect on it, to talk about it, to own it, to acknowledge it, to point it out. And that is active, day-to-day, -day, mundane, shadow work, if you want to call it that. That's being grandiose about it. It's just being a decent human being, basically. And um, that's something that also, like, we have a duty to sort of educate narcissistic people. We, ha we have a duty to educate each other about narcissism as well, because um, it's like... I think that people that are suffering from narcissistic wounding and become very narcissistic um, need to know that, like, that's not okay... They need boundaries, they need to know that they can't just like use people and extract and exploit and manipulate people um, and use people as, you know, supply or whatever. But then there's also this whole thing of like not rescuing because there's people that ultimately like really want to follow the lead of someone or want to adore someone or want to look up to someone. So um, I'm not here to sort of rescue or judge that as right or wrong either, other than um, just know yourself, like be savvy, know the traits, don't sort of reward that kind of like uh, any anything that's abusive basically um, and then that's whole spectrum as well but yeah this has uh, been uh, quite a nice and refreshing video to make actually because it's something that I think about and feel a lot and want to caveat and I hope it's been useful um, and I'd love any interaction or comments below about yeah just how you experience uh, self-reflection, narcissism, lack of self-reflection, whatever in relation to the things discussed in this video. Thank you for watching.